Hockey Mideast action. We'll be back with a tip-off between Illinois State and Ohio U right after this. There you see the records. Illinois State in this game at 24 and 6. Ohio University 22 and 8. The Redbirds won the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. They were 13 and 5 in the regular season in that conference. Ohio University at 22 and 8 on the year, 12 and 6 in the Mid American, and then won the MAC Conference postseason tournament. Now, tell you what about this arena right now, Joe? There are a lot of Illinois State people here in the Sun Dome tonight. The Redbirds have brought some fans down from the Bloomington, Illinois area, from Central Illinois, with them here tonight, and there are a bunch of them right there. A lot of green too the colors of Ohio University for making their first NCAA appearance since the 73-74 season in the coach Danny Knee who worked for uh, uh, Digger Phelps at Notre Dame for a number of years he calls his team the hard hats because they flat get after it this arena within 1500 of being sold out for first round action here in Tampa on the campus of the University of South Florida the winner of this game will play Kentucky on Saturday the winner of the first game tonight there's Danny Nee, the Ohio University coach Purdue beat Robert Morris by two 55 53 it'll be Purdue against Arkansas here in Tampa on Saturday this is Mideast regional action Danny Nee walking up to midcourt to shake hands with Bob Donawal the Illinois State coach as you look at some more Redbird supporters here there's Bob Donawal. What an outstanding job he has done in his fifth year at Illinois State. He's 98 and 47. And Joe Dean, I'll be very surprised if either one of these teams gets away from the other one here tonight. I think, as we mentioned when we came on, there was a good shot there of Coach Bob Donawal. I definitely still think it'll be low scoring, a lot of tempo both ways. The lead will be important because it can dictate how the tempo can be played by the team that has it. They can do the things they want to do if they're on top. Both teams, as we mentioned, are aggressive, hard-nosed. Uh, Illinois State will be man-to-man -man throughout. They really chop you and get after you. We think Ohio State will zone for the most part throughout the game. We are set for the introduction of the starting lineups. Just join the Sun Dome public address announcer, Ron Haley, and meet the two teams. The NCAA Mideast Regional Tournament. The second game is between Ohio University and Illinois State University. The starting lineup for both schools. At forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Lewisburg, North Carolina, number 45, Eddie Hicks. At forward, a 6'8 junior from Monona, Wisconsin, number 45, Mark Zwart. At forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 55, Vic Alexander. At forward, a 6'7 junior from Columbus, Ohio, number 52, Hank Cornley. At center, a 6'8 junior from Brooklyn, New York, number 41, John Devereaux. At center, a 6'7 senior from Iliopolis, Illinois, number 53, Rick Lamb. At guard, a 6'2 senior from Brooklyn, New York, number 25, Jeff Thomas. At guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Anderson, Indiana, number 33, Brad Duncan. At guard, a 6-foot freshman from Columbus, Ohio, number 20, Robert Tatum. And at guard, a 6'1 sophomore from Gary, Indiana, number 10, Michael McKinney. The coach of the Ohio Bobcats is Danny Nee, and the coach of the Illinois State Redbirds is Bob Donwall. <laughs> There you have the starting lineups for tonight's game, and we'll be back with a tip-off between Illinois State and Ohio University right after these messages. Another look at the Sun Dome. Fred White and Joe Dean, happy to have you along for NCAA Tournament Mideast Regional Action. First round action. Here are the officials for tonight's game. Dale Kelly out of the Sun Belt Conference. Jim McDaniel from the Southland. And Jim Clark from the Big Sky. And there's an alternate official in the arena here just in case something should happen to one of these three. The starting lineup again for Illinois State. Duncan and McKinney at the guards. Lamb in the middle. Zwart and Cornley at the forwards. Ohio University has Thomas and Tatum at the guards, Hicks and Alexander up front, Devereaux in the middle, and the alternate official, so you know who he is, is Dan Ferguson. Here tonight. 
Ohio University comes up with a tip off the Bobcats on the attack first here in the Sun Dome. Yeah, North State, they've opened up man to man defensively. Robert Tatum for Ohio University. Duncan with him down inside. They try to get the ball to Eddie Hicks, and the Bobcats turn it over. Illinois State gets it back. It's going to be Ohio University's game throughout. They'll be looking to take it inside as much as they can to Devereaux, Hicks, and Alexander Lowe against this pressure man-to-man -man defense of Illinois State. And Ohio University has opened up in his own defense. First time in the NCAA for Illinois State. They've been in three NITs. There's Lamb. He's blocked by Devereaux. And a battle for the loose ball won by Ohio University. Good hustle, Jeff Thomas, and up come the Bobcats. Devereaux blocked Lamb's first field goal attempt. We got it right into the heart of that zone defense with a great pass by number 33, Brad Duncan. But the beautiful rejection, as you mentioned, on the inside. Great defense. Ohio University of basketball. Vic Alexander cans it from the top of the circle, and Ohio University goes up 2 nothing. First bucket belongs to the Bobcats. 19 minutes left in the first half. Illinois State with the basketball. Michael McKinney. Brad Duncan with it now. They look as Ward at the high post. Don't get it there. Rick Lamb out in the corner. Duncan from long range drills it. Brad Duncan gets two and we're tied at two. Well, Duncan's their outside shooter. The good threat. He'll take it against the zone all night if it's available. We've got a foul called at the end of the floor against Hank Cornley of Illinois State, a 6'7 junior from Columbus, Ohio. First foul of the basketball game. Ohio U will play it in. Eddie Hicks handles it along the sideline. Gets it in to Devereaux. Devereaux, interesting story. Didn't start playing until he was a junior in high school. Didn't play much then. Only took 14 shots his junior year. And now just an outstanding player. There he is on the lob. Gets it up too soft. And a rebound battle won by Zwerk. Illinois State has the basketball. Up they come. Michael McKinney pushes it to the top of the circle. Kicks it off to Zwerk. They lob cross court. Duncan's got it away. Off the front of the rim. The ball loose on the floor out of bounds. It belongs to Illinois State. It was off the foot of one of the Ohio University players. Ball got kicked around underneath. It was a tough break for Ohio, Ohio University. Duncan missed a shot from the corner. They went over the zone defense. Ball was kicked on, hit the heel. Of, he wants time out because of pressure. Land could not get the ball in bounds, and Illinois State had to burn a timeout right there, and I wasn't so they sure. They didn't give it to him. The count was too long, and they're going to give it to Ohio University. You they have, lost the ball. You have to call that timeout before the four count. You got five seconds to get it in. You can't call timeout after four seconds, and Lamb waited a little bit too long. So Ohio University, with good pressure on the inbounds pass, forces the turnover. Tatum to Devereaux to Hicks to Thomas. Oh, there's Devereaux, wide open, he stuffed it. John Devereaux found himself all alone under the basket, got two, and Ohio U leads 4-2. The Pepsi Ohio University team so far. Good pressure defensively now. They've moved the ball well. They've had good shots underneath against that man-to-man -man Illinois State defense. Two well-coached, well-disciplined basketball teams in the early going here. Michael McKinney, Brad Duncan. McKinney can't find a shot off the wing. Ohio sealed it. Duncan's got it. Top of the circle. Good. Brad Duncan has four points. We're tied at four with 17-15 left in the first half. Ohio University zone defense is a 1-2-2, and it's a matchup. Once the offense comes down and sets up, they match up out of that 1-2-2 defense. They pack everybody in the paint. Illinois State, the exact opposite. You will not see them in zone at any time. Bob Dunawald with that body knife philosophy. Man to man all the time. They overplay the passing lanes. They keep the ball from coming inside. They front everything they possibly can, and they play very, very aggressive. Tatum to Devereaux from the top of the circle. In and out. Rebound belongs to Illinois State. Hank Cornley pulled it off. Michael McKinney. Now again, see that Ohio University zone look at him. All in the paint area. Just packed in and done is going to be the key, I think, Fred, because they're going to give him that outside shot. That one wouldn't drop, and Vic Alexander takes it back for Ohio University. Up they come, Jeff Thomas. Tatum, Thomas from long range, short with a try. Tatum runs it down. Jeff Thomas. Michael McKinney defending. Lob down low, Alexander fouled by Lamb. Rick Lamb committed his first personal foul, the second team foul on Illinois State. Ohio University hasn't committed one yet. And a substitution for Illinois State. 
Raynard McLean is in the ball game. And the substitution, Devereaux sits down for Ohio University. They get Dave Kowalski on the floor. Nothing fancy there. Jeff Thomas is kind of the heart and soul of the Ohio University Bobcats. Took it down on the wing. He got it inside low. And, of course, that's where they want to get it to Vic Alexander. Uh, Lamb came across from the foul line, the weak side, to help out. But he fouled as he came across. Bob Donawal, the Illinois State coach. Both teams play with six, seven centers. They're both small. But they both have a great work ethic. Alexander drills both free throws. He's just a 53% shooter. He couldn't tell it from that. And Ohio U goes up 6-4 with 16-02 left in the first half. He's going to press you way out, three-quarter court. And if you break the defense down, then he'll push that zone defense back and set up in that 1-2-2. Two, two. Duncan, Mullane, back to Duncan. Had a shot, couldn't even get the ball under control in time. Mullane tried to get Lamb inside. It's knocked out of there by Robert Tatum, but it's out of bounds to Illinois State under their own basket. Bedford <laughs> fans are all decked out here. They have made the trip from Bloomington, Illinois, to Tampa to see the first ever NCAA contest played by Illinois State. Ohio University was in it last in 1974. They man-to-man -man the inbounds pass. It's a little unusual. Stayed in that defense and, of course, drew a foul right there and as, hits. as they ran their little motion offense against the man-to-man defense. John Devereaux back in the game. Eddie Hicks will take a seat for Ohio University. 6-4, Bobcats leading Illinois State, 15-35, left in the first half, they lob outside, Duncan picks it up, and Illinois State will attack the Ohio University zone, which has changed to a 2-1-2, 2-3. They'll change defenses throughout, mostly 1-2-2, two, two, some 2-3, two, now in a 3-2. Blaine, McKinney, Duncan is open from the deep corner and got it. Brad Duncan showing some shooting ability in the early going. He has six points. He has all the Redbird points, and we're tied at six. He's three of five from the outside. Oh, somebody left John Devereaux all along, and he shows you a little bit of range. Devereaux now has four, and it's eight six, Ohio University. Mullane's guarding him, but he did not come out and put pressure on the point of the ball. Who hasn't seen the ball yet is Hank Cornley for Illinois State. Zone has kept it away from him and Lamb. There's Lamb inside, and he's fouled. That's where they want to get it, too. But it's tough against the Ohio University zone. The Lamb got it, muscled it back to the basket. Good shot there. You can see number 44, Mark Zwart, talking to Bob Donawal, the head coach of Illinois State. 44 is Reynard Mullane. I'm sorry, Mullane. He was fouled, or the foul was committed by Vic Alexander. Rick Lamb gets the free throw. He's a 6'7 senior from Iliopolis, Illinois, small town in central Illinois, 62% free throw. Shooting 52% from the field, but just 62% from the foul line. He is a strong young man. Oh, he is a real horse. Now Eddie Hicks is going to return to the Ohio University lineup. And Vic Alexander is going to take a breather for the Bobcats. Rick Lamb, tie game this year, 23 points and 11 rebounds against DePaul. Free throw on the rim, won't fall. John Devereaux pulls it away for Ohio University. Here come the Bobcats, up by one. Eric Hilton in the game at a guard now. Hilton had been a starter for Ohio U, injured a knee. And he's in the game at the moment. Along with Jeff Thomas at the guard. Eddie Hicks to Thomas along the top of the circle. Duncan defending. We got a foul down in the lane, and that's going to be an offensive foul. It's going to go against Ohio U. Dave Kowalski was detected holding in the lane. And this has really been a battle of determination as to who gets position down low so far in this contest. There's a timeout taken here at the Sun Dome with 14.31 left in our first half. Ohio University leading Illinois State 8-7, and we're back right after this. Fred White, Joe Dean back at the Sun Dome, the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa. Ohio University has had the lead all the way so far. It's been this tight. One point difference right now. The Bobcats with the lead. Illinois State with the basketball. Michael McKenna to Duncan. A little pressure here from Ohio University at midcourt. They're going to try to trap. They've got him in trouble, but they clear it. Raynard Mullane. And back to McKinney to Duncan. Well, Duncan looking for the shot every time he receives the ball. 
he's got the green light, no question about it. Impressive Ohio University defense, though. You've got to break that defense down. Bam, no good. There's Duncan in and out. He may have been a little far out, and the lane had the rebound. He was fouled. That's Dave Kowalski's second. The fourth team foul on Ohio University. Illinois State's been whistled for two, and that was part of the large Redbird contingent that you saw in the background. Dick Alexander back on the floor for Ohio University now. That's a big body he hauls on the floor. Say that they both have come to play would be the understatement. They have really gotten after each other. Underneath those boards, it's fierce. Illinois State with a chance to grab the lead for the first time in this ball game. Duncan, Cornley, Lamb. That's the first time Cornley's touched the ball on the offense. They haven't been able to take it down inside the zone with much success. They man to man defensively this trip. They man on all out of bounds and then stay in it. Cornley, McKinney. Tough to get a shot. McKinney lobs it up, can't get it. Tough rebound by Lamb. He's fouled as he gets the shot away. He had John Devereaux on his back. Rick Lamb, very strong inside, got the second try for Illinois State. The shot wouldn't fall for him. Neither Lamb nor Cornley have a field goal yet. Lamb is one for two on the line. That's the first foul on John Devereaux, number 41. Bob Donawald, the Illinois State coach. Here's the shot again. You can see the muscle he's going to bring it. See the power? He brought it right back to that basket, trying to get it in. But number 41, John Devereaux, who's the leading scorer, leading rebounder, all-league performer for Ohio University, got him underneath. Illinois State goes up 9-8 as Lamb hit the two free throws. Shooting percentages here. Illinois State hit three for six. So is Ohio U. Turnovers to you. Just one for Illinois State. Two for Ohio University. They're handling the ball well. Inside. That's Eddie Hicks, I believe, looking through the pile of ice. It was Eddie Hicks in his first two points. This 10-9, Ohio University. Boy, these two clubs are working at it here. They trap you along that sideline. And they got a turnover. Fred, because he stepped on the sideline with that double team pressure. Eddie Hicks working against the trap. Got his foot on the out of bounds strike. There's going to be a substitution here. Ricky Johnson will check in for Illinois State. A 6'5 sophomore from Indianapolis Washington High School. Michael McKinney from Gary, Indiana. As Bishop Noel takes a break. 13 10 left in first half. Ohio University up by one over Illinois State at the Sun Dome in Tampa. Jeff Thomas with the basketball for the Bobcats of Ohio U. Eddie Hicks. Alexander, Oak Cornley, got off balance and fell a little bit. The shot's up and won't fall. And look at the battle. Alexander gets it back up. Won't get it. John Devereaux had the rebound and a foul is called down in the lane. It's going to go against Ohio University. They were all battling Devereaux. hard. Who is it against? Fred? Devereaux. Devereaux. Shot went up here by Alexander. It wouldn't go. Watch him battle. Everybody, look at everybody in here is fighting for it. 33 maybe could have been called for a foul there. That was Duncan. Devereaux gets it there. But they say he stepped in and, and put an arm against number 52. That's Cornley. Right. Land gets it up. It won't go. Cornley's there. Gets it back. It won't go. And the rebound to Devereaux. Here comes Ohio U. Thomas on the run along the wing. Boy, that is a battle underneath. Cornley and Lamb determined to score, and Ohio University won't let him. 12-25 left in the first half. Alexander from the circle on the rim and drops. Look, Alexander made it stick, and he has a half dozen points. They're running a little kick down for him. He's swinging off of it. He's shooting a little 15-footer just around the foul line, but he had good touch then, made it go down. Cornley from the baseline, in and out. Lamb again, and he got it. Rick Lamb powered it back up and in. He has five. It's 12 11. Ohio U by one with 11.58 left in the first half. Because Ohio U's in the zone, they're not getting good block out position, and Lamb is coming right through it, and that's why he's getting so many offensive boards. Shot block. Hilton was rejected in the middle by Cornyn. I tell you what, Joe, you're going to go a long time before you see two teams this well drilled on the floor together. Watch Hilton. He's going to make a good move here. Reverse dribble. Comes back to the middle, but Carnley says no. It's almost a perfect match. Two ball clubs with the same work ethic, the same size. In the first round of the Mideast regional action here in Tampa. Gary Hilton works against Johnson. This now is Robert Payton. Who can't get it. Graham pulls the rebound down for Illinois State. And I'll tell you what, once he I gets like the paws on it, hang it up. He's got the basketball. He when he gets his meat hooks on it, I like him. He flat comes to play. Illinois State with the basketball. And a whistle blowing. The ball kicked away down there. Tatum got a piece of it and kicked it out of bounds. There he is, Robert Tatum. He's a freshman from Columbus, Ohio. 
And it comes to Brad Duncan. Duncan trying to protect the ball from Tatum. High post land. They're man to man defensively because of the out of bounds situation. Zones all other times. Ricky Johnson against Hilton. Now Mullane over this zone and he got it. Weren't in the zone, excuse me, but Raynard Mullane gets his first two points and Illinois State is up 13 to 12 with 10.53 left in the first half. And these two teams are just eyeball to eyeball in the Sun Dome right now. Foul call down inside. Raynard Mullane was detected holding. It'll be his first foul. Team foul number three on the Redbirds. Ohio University has been whistled for six already here in the first half. From this point on with 10.49, Ohio University will be shooting one and a bonus. Hopefully they'll shoot a bonus. <laughs> That's what they hope. That's what, when you're on the line, you're hoping. Look at that pressure defensively. Nate Cole in the game now for Ohio University. Eric Dalton working out on the wing against Johnson. Nate Cole. Now Tatum. Kowalski. And now covering him inside. They go to Cole and all trying to dig it out of there. The battle is on. The shot is up. Won't fall. Renard Mullane has it for Illinois State. Ricky Johnson moves it across the timeline along the circle it goes to Duncan and the shot isn't there. They're going to pull it back out and reset the offense. Good patience by Illinois State. Lamb off the baseline. Got it. Rick Lamb has seven points and the Redbirds of Illinois State are up 15 to 12. A three-point lead to Illinois State with 10.07 left in the first half. A little mix-up in the Ohio University defense and Lamb was wide open on the baseline. They'd fallen back in that 1-2-2 two, two, but they got... Just a little overload on the right side. They didn't cover it well. It cost them two. Robert Taylor works against Ricky Johnson. And the corner it goes to Nate Cole. Lamb is out with him. Johnson went for the steal. Tatum's in the lane. The shot good. Robert Tatum as Johnson gambled and lost that time. And it's 15-14 Illinois State with 9.37 left in the first half. Ricky Johnson tried to anticipate. There was good anticipation, but he didn't come up with the ball. Maynard Mullane in the land, quick turnaround shot, too short. And the ball belongs to Ohio University, but it's going to be a traveling call. As John Devereaux came down with the ball, he hit the deck and was called for traveling. Quite a basketball battle going here. At the University of South Florida in Tampa, the Sun Dome to see. 9.26 left in our first half. Time out here. The score, Illinois State 15, Ohio U 14. This telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA and use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. 926 left in the first half. Illinois State 15, Ohio University 14. Fred White along with Joe Dean. Nice to have you with us from the Sun Dome in Tampa. And Joe, these two teams are just clawing at one another out here. The defense is so impressive. Illinois State, of course, as we mentioned, keep talking about their aggressive man-to-man -man defense, but Ohio University, too. They'll man-to-man -man anytime there's an out-of-bounds. Any other time they're in the zone, but it's super aggressive. Vic Alexander with a steal that time for Ohio University. The Bobcats with a chance to go back on top here. Fred, they do something that's opposite. Most teams zone the inbounds pass. They man the inbounds pass and stay in it, and it becomes very, very aggressive. They're a good defensive team. Alexander lost from outside, can't get it. Ricky Johnson with the rebound, and here comes Illinois State with a one-point lead. Neither team really looking for the transition basket. Neither team really pushing it up the court. It's almost all set offense against set defense. Maynard Mullane from outside, in and out, wins the shot, and Jeff Thomas pulls the rebound away for Ohio U. Both teams trying to push it up. The other side always back on defense. These two teams are really sound. We're looking at two well-coached basketball teams right here with a lot of patience. Nate Cole takes it to the circle. Try to bounce it down inside. It's kicked by Brad Duncan. It'll be out of bounds to Ohio University. Substitution for Illinois State. Interesting story here. Lou Stefanovic from a small town near Villain, Indiana. 6'8 sophomore, but he is... Actually eligible to play for the Yugoslav Olympic team in the next Olympics. His parents came to this country and he has not yet fulfilled his citizenship here in the United States. Now he's lived here since he was like seven years old when I was a freshman in high school for basketball and there, and here he is playing in the colleges. And he's still actually a citizen of Yugoslavia and can play on the Olympic team for them. Has a chance to go back this summer and play with them. Long try, no good. Hit by Kowalski. It's gonna count. He was fouled by Ricky Johnson. Great offensive board. He stayed, 
the thing that happened there, his anticipation and exposure was so good. He anticipated the shot. He saw that it may come up. He exposed himself to the glass. He got inside Johnson. He missed the shot just as it comes off the right side. You can see Johnson behind him already. He goes over his back just as he tips it in, and now he has a chance at a three-point play and a two-point lead. Didn't get it. Kowalski too strong with it, but it's cut back out by Nate Cole, saved by Ohio U. The Bobcats have a one-point lead at the basketball. 7.59 left in the first half. 16.15, Ohio University. Quite a basketball game going here in Tampa. See the team wearing it out and give the defense the credit. Illinois State 40%. Ohio University 42.9%. Robert Tatum, Nick Alexander, Jeff Thomas, Nate Cole tried to force his way in the lane. He's going to be called for charging. First foul on Nate Cole, a 6'7 junior from Hillcrest Heights, Maryland. It just wasn't there. He was trying to force his way up the gut against the tough Illinois State defense. Illinois State is 6 of 15 so far. Ohio University 6 of 14 in the shooting department. Joe, the one difference I see in the game right now is Danny Nee has been substituting a lot more frequently than Bob Donawal from Illinois State. And the intensity of this game, you wonder if somewhere along the line, that will make a difference. We'll find out. He keeps fresh players in the game. No question about it. Mullane can't get it down off the baseline. Devereaux rebounds for Ohio U. Jeff Thomas brings it up. Down deep in the corner it goes to Eddie Hicks, to Thomas, to Devereaux. Mullane defending Devereaux, got a hand on it, it's taken away. But it's taken right back by Ohio U. Down the lane to Hicks, the shot is good. Eddie Hicks gets his fourth point, and Ohio University goes up by three. Three has been the biggest lead of the game. Each team has had it at that point. 7.05 left in our first half. Great steal by Ohio University when it looked like Illinois State had a little bit of a break going, and they handled the ball beautifully. Michael McKinney for the Redbirds of Illinois State. Good Duncan. Back to McKinney. Stefanovic at the baseline. Near the corner. Looking for help. Down low it goes. Look how far that zone on your screen is pushed back in there. It's from the foul line, extended in. They'll almost give you the shot at the top of the key. Stefanovic can't get it down the lane to land. Now Duncan splits the defense, gets the shot up, and banks it from out front. Brad Duncan has eight points. I'm not sure he intended to bank it from in front, but he did it. It's a one-point lead to Ohio University. 6.24 left in our first half. As intense a basketball game in the first half as you could hope to see. Thomas against McKinney. Devereaux against Lamb. Excuse me, Stefanovic defending. Illinois State does a lot of switching defensively in their man-to-man, -man, particularly underneath, because Ohio University is trying to do a lot of picking underneath to free those big people, particularly Devereaux. Take them along the wing for Ohio University. Tried to lob to Devereaux. Stefanovic's got a hand, but Devereaux's there. Shots up, won't fall. That's Tatum inside. Robert Tatum, at six feet tall, got inside and scored, and a foul was called. Yes. Tatum has four. This could be a three-point play. Just give credit here to Hustle. Devereaux, they got it to him. You could see right there. He missed an easy shot. Wouldn't go down, but he kept it alive, kicked it straight back, and there was number 20, Robert Tatum. He got the rebound. Nobody blocked him off. Somebody made a fundamental mistake, and he has a chance at a three-point play and the biggest lead in this game, which would be four if he can get it, and he does. Luis Stefanovic committed the foul. His first, the fifth on Illinois State. Tatum got the free throw. He has five, and four-point lead now to Ohio University. The biggest lead in this ball game, 5:43 left in the first half. McKinney to Brad Duncan for Illinois State. Tough, tough defense being played by both clubs here. Ohio University zone, Illinois State, man to man, and that's the only difference in these two teams is that philosophy right there. McKinney tried to step inside, it wasn't there for him. Stefanovic has it knocked loose, and it's going to be off the hands of Ohio University. They say Eddie Hicks hit it last, and Illinois State still has it. Well, you talk about defense. Good Mark shot, Short will return. The there of Danny Knee, Fred, who is up directing traffic, and what a job he's done at Ohio University. It's the first NCAA visit for almost 10 years. 13 and 14 last year, and he's won 22 this year. What a turnaround. 74, the last time Ohio University was in the NCAA. Mark Short back on the floor for Illinois State. Stefanovic out. Down to baseline. Lamb was fouled. They got it low, and that's one place you can get it low against the zone defense and right on the baseline. And that's where they got it to Lamb, and he brought it back underneath and was fouled. But Illinois State is going to have to shoot a little bit at the top of that key, and that's three fouls on John Davero, and that could be really key, key, key in this game. Three fouls with 5.07 left in the first half. 
And Devereaux has to go to the bench. And that's one of the strong offensive players for Ohio U. Rick Lamb, free throw, good. Lamb is now four for five on the free throw line with eight points here in the first half. He's averaging 14 points, nine rebounds a game. He got them both. Nine points for Lamb. 21-19 Ohio University with 5-0-2 left in the first half. Jodeen will visit with Kentucky coach Jody Hall at halftime here. I'm sure he's watching this with plenty of interest. He's got the winner here in the Sun Dome on Saturday. Kowalski backs it out for Ohio University. So it's really remarkable how these teams have all adjusted. No shot clock, no three-point line. But I thought that Steve Reed from Purdue made a point. We talked in that first game. He said, I played all my life without it. It was no adjustment at all. <laughs> it's a good line, and it's true, because this year there was so much experimentation. The NCAA now, no clock for anybody, no three-point plays. Thomas a little strong with the try. Kowalski tried to tip it back up. Couldn't control it, but it was knocked out of bounds by Illinois State. And Ohio University will get it back again. Again, quite a battle going here at the Sun Dome on the case of the University of South Florida in Tampa. We have a timeout here with four minutes and 24 seconds left in our first half. The score now, Ohio University 21, Illinois State 19. Red White, Joe Dean back in the Sun Dome. Couple of final scores from other regionals for you. James Madison defeated West Virginia 57 50 tonight, and Maryland got by Tennessee Chattanooga 52 51. I'll tell you what, Joe, I did ACC basketball this year, and I wasn't so sure Maryland would beat that Tennessee Chattanooga club. I wasn't so sure either because they've been tough all year long. Maryland's been a little up and down and lost Herman Peel late in the season. Why jumper off the rim won't fall. Rick Lamb spears the rebound. Illinois State with a chance to tie it here with 4-16 left in the first half. Both James Madison's victory to two coaches. A lot of verbal action between those two. Campanella and uh, Gail Catlett and Gail Catlett's team went down. Got a foul along the lane and that one goes against Nate Cole of Ohio University. It's his second foul. Illinois State in the one and one now. And they have committed five team fouls as Illinois State. This will put Mark Zwart on the free throw line. As you look at Danny Nee, the Ohio University coach, this young man, Mark Zwart, very intelligent player. He's a 6 a junior from Monona, Wisconsin, carrying a 3.8 grade average in radio and television. Joe, I think he wants to be a basketball analyst someday. <laughs> <laughs> Off the hill of the rim. Maybe a play by play guy. Well, he is a steady player. He turns it over very rarely. But uh, missed the funny level one and one. It was a big miss. He could have tied the game for Illinois State. Another quick word about Mark Ward. He has more career rebounds and points. That tells you something about how unselfish he is on the floor. 21-19, Ohio University, 345. Left in our first half here. And quite a basketball game going. What are your game tonight? Purdue beat Robert Morris by two points, 55-53. Eddie Hicks fires in the corner. Won't get it, and Swart has the rebound. Illinois State with another chance to tie. Brad Duncan clears the timeline. Ohio U packs that zone back in along the lane, and Illinois State goes on the attack, trying to find the two points to tie it. Michael McKinney with the basketball. It's open at the top of that key, and they need to take that shot. They need to spot up, be ready to shoot, particularly Duncan, who's an excellent outside shooter, because they're going to take the middle away from him. Cornley couldn't get it down, but Rick Lamb rebounds it. Rick Lamb getting it done. We're tied at 21. And Lamb now has 11 points in the first half. Three minutes left in first half action. Rick Alexander back to Jeff Thomas for Ohio University. The Bobcats pull it back out for a moment. Ohio University being very patient with the basketball. We're tied at 21. Duncan hits the deck, gets up. Thomas with the basketball. 
Ohio University attacking Illinois State here at the Sun Dome with 2.35 left in the first half. Again, we are tied 21-21. Good defense and a patient offensive team, Ohio University. They want the good shot, and they got it. Thomas can't get it down. Rebound. Swart takes it away for Illinois State. The biggest lead in this game has been three points. Each team has had a three-point lead. These two teams have been eyeball to eyeball. Now with 2.13 left in the first half, they're still tied at 21. Illinois State with a basketball. Lamb. Duncan. Duncan up top. Illinois State going after the zone. Duncan fake, couldn't get it. A minute 55 left in first half action now. Here's Duncan, top of the circle, off the heel of the rim. He's having trouble now getting the shot down. The battle on for the loose ball. Alexander has it with a minute 45 left in the half for Ohio University. Illinois State is 8 of 20 so far in the first half. Just fair shooting. Ohio University, 9 of 23. Well, the defenses have really stymied the shooting for both clubs here tonight. Either team can really get a good shot on Duncan opened the game hot for Illinois State, but he's cooled off. Ohio University is running a double stack on each side of the foul line with number 20, Tatum, handling the post, and then he'll give it off to uh, number 25, uh, Jeff Thomas. They'll play switch around. It's almost like a delay game. Now Thomas gets the shot. Jeff Thomas with his first two points of the ball game, and Ohio University back up 23-21 with a minute, two seconds left in first half action here in Tampa. Illinois State with 53 seconds left in the half. Trying to get it tied again. Wouldn't be surprised to see them hold it for the last shot of the first half unless they got a layup underneath. This is Duncan. Says something to Lamb. Good shot there, that defense. It's just packed completely back in there, trying desperately to take everything away from the inside of Illinois State. I think Illinois State is content to take the last shot of the half. 26 seconds left in first half action. Ohio University with a two-point lead. Illinois State just going to take the last shot of the half and hope to go down at halftime tied. No worse than two down. Danny Nee's game plan is to shut down the big guys inside. Lamb and Conley, and so far they've done a pretty good job of it. There's Duncan from the deep corner. He's too strong. Zwart, big offensive rebound. It won't fall. Tip is good by Hank Conley with two seconds left in the half. Conley's first two points of the basketball game came with two seconds left in the first half, and they tied the ball game. Danny Nee headed for the Ohio University dressing room, sees his club in a tie at halftime. What a first half here at the Sun Dome in Tampa. We are at halftime. The score again, Ohio University 23, Illinois State 23. We'll be back after these messages with our halftime program. There's your halftime score, 23-23, Ohio University and Illinois State. Each team had a three-point lead in the first half of this basketball game. Nice to have you with us, Fred White, along with Joe Dean. And Joe, we said at the beginning of the game, we'll be very surprised if one team gets away from the other. It's almost like a team looking in a mirror when they look at the other club, except for that difference in the zone man-to-man -man philosophy. But what a great basketball game this has been. I'm really impressed with both these clubs. I am, too. The defense has absolutely been tremendous. Man to man, we keep talking about Illinois State. It's a hatchet defense. It's like Bobby Knight, karate, whatever you want to call it. They run over the top of picks. They do a lot of switching inside. That's beautiful. It's been tremendous. But Ohio University, they're convinced they've got to shut down that inside game of uh, Illinois State, and they've done that. It's been a jam packed defense, a 1 2 2. A little man now and then on an out of bounds thing, but it's been effective and it's worked and this score's tied and it should be because they've played even. Rick Lamb, the Illinois State Center, said, I'm tired of hearing about how physical we are. And somebody says, Well, what do you think you hear? And he says, Probably because we shed some blood along the way. We're at halftime. We're at the Sun Dome in Tampa on the campus of the University of South Florida. Our score, Ohio University 23, Illinois State 23. We pause now for a station break. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. The score is probably exactly what it should be here at halftime. Illinois State and Ohio University in that 23-23 tie. These two clubs have just been at one another hammer and tongs throughout the first half of this basketball game. Statistically, here's what it looks like at halftime. And the stats are the same, Fred. It should be tied. Ohio University 10 of 26. They're shooting 38.5%. 
Illinois State 9 of 24. They're 37 and a half percent. So you can shoot the shooting percentages are about the same. The rebounds are about the same. The turnovers are close. Ohio University 6 to 4. A uh, couple more in the fouls. Well, Ohio University 9 to 5. And, and one player for Ohio University. Fred, you might want to mention that. John Devereaux has, has some three foul fouls. He's the only in foul problem. One other individual worth mentioning. Rick Lamb has six rebounds for Illinois State. And now anybody can come out of that pile of bodies and claim six rebounds for himself in the first half of this game. That's kind of amazing. And don't blame the poor shooting percentages on poor shooters. Defense. Credit the defense with it. There again, the halftime score, Illinois State and Ohio University are all locked up at 23-23. We're at the Sun Dome on the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa. And we'll be back. Right after everybody, Fred White along with Joe Dean. There there were records coming in. One of them's going to win. One of them's going to lose. And it's going to be a shame that one of them is going to go out of here a loser. And Joe, the excitement of NCAA tournament action underway. First round action across the country being contested tonight, tomorrow night, and then over the weekend. And to be an all, to be totally honest with you, we're probably looking at two teams here that don't have much of a chance to win the big prize in Albuquerque, the two teams that may epitomize what college basketball is all about. I'd hate to play either one of them because they play so hard. What a job Danny Knee has done. There he is right there with his Ohio University team and Bob Donawal. What a job he's done at Illinois State. And Kentucky has to play the winner. And I tell you, on a good on a good night, they can knock Kentucky off, and the same thing could happen in that second game. Purdue's going to play Arkansas here, and Purdue is the runner-up in the Big Ten. They'll give Arkansas all they want. And every game we've seen so far in this tournament, they're all close. They're one-pointers, and a steal already by Ohio. Purdue beat Robert Morris by two in the first game. I'll explain my comment about maybe not a great chance to win the big prize a little bit later on. I don't say that in any disparaging fashion at all, but somewhere along the line, somebody's going to out-talent one of them. What you're saying is that they're two beautifully coached teams and they play hard and they love it. And that's accurate. And they're putting on a great display for 8,023 fans here in the Sun Dome tonight. Again, the biggest lead by either team in the first half was three points. They each had a three-point lead at one time. Jeff Thomas puts Ohio U back up 25-23. That's his fourth point of the night. They ran a beautiful screen underneath and they... Got Duncan trapped back up underneath there in that man-to-man -man defense at Illinois State. He just couldn't get free, and they had him loose all of a sudden at the top of the circle. And right. Duncan it. goes for the tie. It's in and out. Zwart has it yeah. back up and out. Mark Zwart gets his first two of the night. We're tied at 25. Again, the weakness of the zone defense of Ohio University. Nobody blocked him off. Jeff Thomas walks it up. Illinois State again still man-to-man. Will be all night. Devereaux puts it up. Off the front of the rim. Vic Alexander in the lane is fouled. The basket's going to count. Vic Alexander has eight points. Ohio U back up by two. Nothing fancy. Called against Wart. Just good offensive board work. Shot didn't go. Got the ball back. Put it in. Chance for a three point play. And it'll be the biggest lead of the game. Each team has led it one time by three points. Bernard Mullane replaces Mark Swart on the floor for Illinois State. That was Ward's first foul. The team fouls even. Shepman. Illinois State has the only team foul in the second half. Alexander misses the free throw, and Illinois State comes away with the rebound and a chance to tie it again. 18 minutes, 27 seconds of basketball action left here in the Sun Dome. There you saw Duncan again catch it in shooting position. Now he catches it, shoots, and hits. Brad Duncan always receives that ball in shooting position. He knocked it down for his 10th point. He was four for ten the first half. He's one for two so far here the second half. He's their outside shooter, and he must hit from the outside, which is going to bring that defense out at all. If memory serves me, he hit his first three shots in this That's game. right. 17-59 left in the game. 27-27 tie. Ohio University's Bobcats on the attack now. They work on the Illinois State man. <laughs> Thomas got a little push from Lamb. Nothing called. Takes it up inside. Can't get it. Lamb claims a rebound, but he's called for pushing off. They didn't catch him the first time, then they got him on the push-up. Anytime you hit somebody from the rear, it's almost an automatic call. And that's what happened. Thomas, the little guy, was on the inside. Lamb thought that he was big enough to get it over him. But he hit him from the rear with his body, and they called a foul. Second team foul, I believe, on Illinois State. And Bob, Don Bob Donawal right there, a good shot of him. He looks worried. Alexander can't can it. Lamb claims another rebound. Cornley got a hand on it, then Lamb came out with it, and McKinney's going to push it up in a little faster fashion than Illinois State's been getting it there. Duncan down low it goes. Cornley kicks it back out. Duncan squares up, fires and hits. 
They were moving the ball faster and quicker. They pushed it up quicker. They took it inside, which they haven't been doing. A good pass out. And you're right, that offense is quicker. They're trying to do more and do it sooner. Shot in the lane. That one won't fall for Tatum. And Lamb claims another rebound. Nine rebounds in this ball game for Rick Lamb. That's his average. Off the baseline, Mullane in and out. Devereaux clears the rebound. Up to Thomas for Ohio U. Good shot, but nobody under the rebound. There's going to be a foul call against Michael McKinney. That is the first foul on Michael McKinney. Team foul, number three on Ohio U. Number 50, Nate Cole, foul comes in for Ohio University. He replaces Vic Alexander. Danny Nee continues to shuffle players in and out. Bob Donawal going with pretty much the same lineup. Jeff Thomas kind of caught him napping there. Illinois State didn't get back defensively and get set up real well as quick as they should have. Jeff Thomas just took it all away and didn't get it, but he's shooting two. Thomas gets the free throw. Eric Hilton was in the game for a while on the first half of the garden. I think other than that, the only substitution for Illinois State has been Mullane for Zwart. Right. So it's an Iron Man act for the Redbirds. They've played seven people. Free throw good. Thomas nails them both. He now has six points. We're tied at 29 with 17.03 left in this basketball game. Michael McKinney brings it up. 6-1 sophomore from Gary, Indiana. Cornley takes it in and nails it. Hank Cornley with his fourth point of the night. They broke the defense down at half court and had numbers at the back side. And that's why they had the easy layup. That lobbed to Cole, and he hammered McKinney, and the foul is called against Nate Cole, his third. He's the second Bobcat with three fouls on him. The Illinois State fans applaud him. Their club up by two with 16.44 to play. Well, they got it in on the low post to Nate Cole, but the defense, McKinney, he was set up. Michael McKinney took the charge. Full court pressure, oh high. Cornley started to take the jumper, then got shut off, took an off-balance shot, and Eddie Hicks pulls the rebound away, and here comes Ohio U with a chance to tie it. Thomas, baseline, Devereaux off-balance, but gets it anyway. John Devereaux has six. Good-looking player. Beautiful player. He knows he can stick it. He's got confidence. He shot it with good confidence under pressure, but for him, it was a good one. He got it to go down. 31-31 tie, 16-12 left in the game. Lamb partially blocked by Devereaux. Here they come, Robert Tatum up on the wing. Thomas from the top of the circle, too strong with it. And Hank Cornley has the rebound for Illinois State. I'll be honest with you, I don't care if this game ever ends. I can watch it's about eight hours away. They away. are really going at it, these two. And what a block the last time by Devereaux. McKinney in the circle. Defense is still way back there. Cornley heavy traffic, partially blocked Devereaux. Mullane trying to keep it alive, Canton. Here comes Thomas for Ohio U. Tatum in close, lobs it up and gets it. Robert Tatum had to go to the lob. Illinois State was there defensively, but Ohio U regains the lead, 33-31. The defense is so packed in, Fred, that they need to shoot Illinois State that 15 or 20-foot shot like right there. They need to take that. And they do. And they do make it. They'll listen to me here. They'll get... <laughs> but the defense is really packed in, and that's the good shot for them. Yeah, there were two more substitutions for Illinois State. Ricky Johnson is in a bit, and so was Stefanovic in the first half. Right, they were in the first half. You're right. 33 33 tie, 15 minutes left in our first half, and now Stefanovic is going to come back in for Illinois State. They're kind of playing a little spread game here. Nobody on the backside. They got two guards out, and kind of three right along the foul line, all the way across. They got a basket out of this in the first half as Jeff Thomas. Uh, whip Duncan one-on-one -on, -one on a spread out. And they're really forcing them to play defense and cover much more of the court than what normally Illinois State wants to do. Ohio University is set to make three substitutions with the next opportunity. Illinois State will make one. Tatum, McKinney out with him. Devereaux. It's kind of a delay-type offense, but it's not one that's going to just let the air out completely. They're breaking people for the basket. Would like to score if they could. See that pass and then cut. Got a little mismatch with Hicks against Duncan. That's right. Lamb is guarding number uh, 20, Robert Tatum. Now they're, they're going to switch back now. They just did. Now well, Duncan's back with Tatum outside, and there's a turnover. Ohio University lost it. Jeff Thomas lost the handle on the ball. Bob Donawal, the Illinois State coach, looking on. Now three substitutions for Ohio University and one for Illinois State. They'll come with a timeout here at the Sendo. 
We're in Tampa, Florida. Time out here with 14 minutes, three seconds left in the basketball game. Nothing's been settled. Illinois State 33, Ohio University 33. Nothing's changed. They're still tied at 33. Ohio University and Illinois State. Well, we, we were right about one thing, Jody. At the start of the game, we said we don't think one team can get away from the other one. And so far, that's been true. As we keep saying, the biggest lead has been three points by either team. 14 minutes left in the basketball game. Winner yeah. plays Kentucky. Paul Barron in the game now for Ohio University, seeing his first action. Eric Hilton is out there. Here's McKinney with a jumper from the circle. First two points of the night for Michael McKinney, the 6'1 sophomore, and Illinois State goes back up. 35-33 with 13-41 left in the game. Only his second shot of the game. Paul Barron, freshly off the bench for Ohio with the ball. And he hits along the wing. Nate Cole, now Barron. Nate Cole against Kovanovich. Now Hilton. Barron again. Boy, both clubs are patient. Good patience. And I think with patience, they can get it inside. It's right there to him or to Devereaux Alexander. Vic Alexander now has 10 points. We're tied at 35. I like that offense. If they'll be patient, they can get it to Alexander, Devereaux on the inside. And that's exactly what they did. Hope we can find out how many ties and lead changes there have been in this basketball game. There's the jump ball, and the possession belongs to Ohio University. Of course, the jump ball against Lamb on the inside. They tied him up. Good defense. And the next, course, jump ball situation would belong to Illinois State. 12 57 left in the game. 35 35 tie. Ohio University now has the basketball. Second half, Illinois State 5 of 10, obviously 50%. Ohio University 4 of 9, 44.4. Ohio is 2 for 3 at the line, and Illinois State has yet to shoot a foul shot. But Ohio University has turned it over eight times so far in the second half, and Illinois State has just turned it over five. Paul Barron, Vic Alexander, Eddie Hicks along the wing now for Ohio U. I mean, that spread offense. They're really spreading the court and make them chase more defensively. And I keep saying they have to play cover more defense in their man-to-man, -man, which is tough. Paul Barron trying to spin by Duncan, loses a basketball, picked up by McKinney. McKinney stops, goes, stops, goes, and that pulls it back out. Ohio University really got back quick and prevented any kind of a transition basket. And now they're going to play trade out. Illinois State says, well, if you can do that, we can do that, too. We're going to make you pull that defense further out so we can run our inside game. Bob Donawal just said pull it up. They're still zoning. It's a 1-2-2. Two, two. Okay, now Duncan. It's a chess game, Fred. 11.47 left in this contest. 35-35 top. Purdue beat Robert Morris by two in the first game. 55-53. James Madison beat West Virginia 57-59. And Maryland beat Tennessee Chattanooga 52-51. Other scores that we have for you. McKinney, quick jumper in the lane. Won't drop for him. Rebound battle on. Paul Barron wins it for Ohio U. Up comes Eddie Hicks to Barron. Barron's going to take the drive. Too strong with it. Maynard Mullane has the rebound for Illinois State. And back come the Redbirds with a chance to regain the lead. Had a pretty good drive. Barron saw daylight and he really headed for the house. He just couldn't get it to go down, and Illinois State still now, like Ohio University, trying to pull that defense out, and they'd love to see him Fred, come out of that zone defense and chase him a little bit man-to-man. -man. But as long as it's this close, you can bet that Danny Knee will not come out of that zone defense. He wants to keep that middle jam. Duncan back near the timeline with it. Eddie Hicks defending. Lane back to Duncan for Michael McKenna. 10-37 left in the basketball game. It does make the defense cover a longer portion of the court, even out of that zone, and it does open some daylight. Last trip, they got a pretty good shot by McKinney. It just wouldn't go. There's Lamb on the baseline. He got hammered. They were not going to let him have the easy two. The foul went against Nate Cole. It's his fourth. I like the play, though. He kicked it into the middle, cut baseline. They bounced past it back to him. That was the key, and he really muscled it to the basket. Couldn't get it to go, but he'll shoot two when they come back. Watch this right here. See the... 
Ruts the pass. Bounce pass. Bounce right back to him. And Alexander tried to pick him up and got him from the rear. He hammered him, as you said. And you're right. When they got where Rick Lamb was going, three new, three new players now on the floor for Ohio University. Thornton sat down. Cole sat down. And Durham sat down. Rick Lamb that, now has 12 points. Key to that, Fred, is bounce pass in traffic. You've got to bounce pass in traffic. 13 points for Rick Lamb now. Rick Alexander, Robert Tatum, John Devereux. Eddie Hicks and Jeff Thomas line up now for Ohio University. Ray Mullane, Michael McKenna, Hank Cornley. There's Devereaux with a jumper off the baseline. He had it. That's eight points now for Devereaux. Lamb is out there. And one more guard, Ricky Johnson on the floor for Illinois State. He's the guy they need to go to, and they need to look more inside to give it to Devereaux. Lamb down the baseline. Got it. Oh, they're cutting it up inside now. Good offense by Illinois State. 15 points for Lamb and the Illinois State Redbirds up by two with 9.46 to play. Well, they've got that Ohio University defense a little further spread out now, so they're able to operate back there just a little bit more. John Devereaux. Jeff Thomas. Oh. Pick Alexander's pass right through the hands of Robert Tatum. And Illinois State has a two-point lead in the basketball, and when was the last time the team was up by two and had the ball in this game? Time out here in the Sun Dome. 9.28 left in this contest. The score now, Illinois State 39, Ohio University 37. The Illinois State fans whooping it up here at the Sun Dome in Tampa. Fred White along with Joe Dean. Quite a basketball game going. Illinois State leading Ohio U 39-37. There have been 10 ties in the second half of this basketball game. To say it's been close would be the understatement. Illinois State has been ahead six times in the second half, but Ohio University has been ahead four times in the second half. And as you mentioned, the game has been tied 10 times here in the second half, and the biggest lead by either team has been three points. They've each had a three-point lead at one time. 9-19 left in the basketball game. They locked up in the opening second. They've been there ever since. Great intensity on both clubs. Illinois State definitely trying to pull the defense a little further out so they'll have some operating room. So far, it's worked pretty well. And Ohio University, they're trying to trap this a little bit out of it to force the action. I'll tell you what, this game looks like a cinch to go to overtime. But we're playing one of <laughs> Second half shooting, Illinois State, 7 for 13. Ohio University, 6 for 12. But Ohio University's turned it over 10 times. Really hurt them in the second half. Eight minutes, 36 seconds of basketball left. 39-37, Illinois State. The Redbirds continue to try to pull Ohio University out. Bernard Mullane almost had the shot. Decided not. Back out it comes to Rick Lamb. Good, intelligent basketball being played by both teams here. Neither side will give anything. They've almost gone to somewhat of a delay. I mean, they want to really pull that defense out with a two-point lead and 8-13 to go or lay up for something really cheap on the inside. Michael McKinney gets it to Hank Cornley along the baseline, back out to Mullane. Oh, backhanded pass inside, and Cornley couldn't catch it, but they say Ohio University touched it last. The and break. Mullane got a little bit too eager. Bob Donawal didn't really like that series of passes he saw. Danny Nee signaling his defense. Cornley was backing in. There's Bob Donawal there. Very intense. You think he's locked in? Time out taken out. here. This one is taken by Ohio University. So maybe now Danny Nee is going to change the strategy a little bit. We will find out. They took Illinois State, I think, took the timeout. Excuse Fred. me. The Redbirds did take it. Bob Donawal talking along the sideline. Time out here with eight minutes, one second left in the ballgame. Illinois State is Ohio University, 39-37. Fred White along with Joe Dean. There's the score. Illinois State up by two. 8.01 to play. And to show you how tough this has been defensively by both teams, Joe and I were just talking at the timeout. We can remember perhaps two layups have been attempted in the game. You can't get a layup against one of these teams. Ohio University still in that zone. See what Illinois State does after the timeout. Pretty much the same offense. Few minor changes. I think so. He's still, he's got Lamb all the way out in the center of the court playing backcourt because he is an excellent ball handler. Got good hands. Ricky Johnson in the middle. It's good. 
Illinois State gets two from Ricky Johnson, and they are up by four. That's the biggest lead of the game with 731 to play. The spread offense really did it because it spread the defense out, gave them some daylight, and they got an excellent shot. Got nothing but a little string music for Illinois State. Bob Donawal found something there and capitalized. Devereaux's shot misses. Vic Alexander takes it back up, banks it off the glass, won't fall. Ricky Johnson, big rebound for the Redbirds. And Illinois State has a four-point lead in the basketball with 7.07 left in this game. Ohio University is going to have to really get down and get after it now defensively because Illinois State really going to spread it with seven minutes to go and almost go delay. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see him really let the air out unless they could get something really cheap. Gordon lay down along the baseline two time. The ball knocked away out of bounds. Belongs to Illinois State with 6.49 left in the game. It's a long time, though, to play that kind of a delay game. Their, their spread, though, has worked very, very well. Rick Lamb will trigger the inbounds pass. Lobs it way outside to Michael McKinney. Again, the four-point lead is the biggest lead of the night. Raynard Mullane takes it from outside and got it. Raynard Mullane now has four points, and Illinois State up by six with 6.37 to play. I don't know if that's the shot that Bob Donawal wanted, but he was wide open at the foul line. The defense had pressured so far out in the court. The defense just has to cover too much ground. Had some daylight, he turned around and stuck it in. It's a six-point lead. But a foul at the end of the floor called against Raynard Mullane. His first, second, excuse me. That's the team's fourth foul in the second half. Ohio University has been called for three in the, maybe two in the second half. Not many fouls have been called in this game. Lob to Devereaux. Devereaux, turnaround jump shot. Off the heel of the rim, and Ohio University may be forcing it a little bit right now, and Illinois State gets it. Hank Cornley pulls the rebound off. Redbirds by six, and their fans on their feet and roaring here in the Sun Zone. Ohio needed a basket real, real bad on that particular trip. Get the feeling they may have forced the last couple of shots yep. just a little bit. Didn't have enough patience as they normally have. And Ohio University's gone man-to-man -man defensively. And Illinois State's what they've been wanting. And now he's, he's running his circle. He's saying, run motion. Run motion. You're going to see the motion offense in action now. Lamb's going low. Cornley moving along the lane. Now Lamb. 5.47, left in the basketball game. Bob Dunawal begins to foul the sidelines as the Redbirds run the delay game against Ohio University in the lane. Cornley lays it up, too strong and land. Tried to tip it and miss, but a foul is called against Ohio University's Vic Alexander. Once they went man-to-man -man defensively, you could see Bob Dunawal. He was up waving his arm in a circle. He wanted motion. He wanted to get picks, pick down, pick low, get it inside. Let's really take it to him. Wait a minute. That was John Devereaux, and he was called for his fourth foul, I believe. I believe they call that foul on Devereaux, and it'll be his fourth foul. We'll check it. I'm not sure, but let me check and see for you, Fred, to see who the foul is on. The Ohio University huddle. Here's the last Here's game. the play right here. That is Devereaux. Jack Devereaux, no question about it. He got him just as he came across to shoot it. He didn't go, but Devereaux fouled him, and when we come back, and number 52, Hank... Cornley will shoot two. We wish to take an opportunity here to thank tournament manager John Wattis, tournament media coordinator Dave Jovanovic, the athletic director Harold McElhaney of Ohio University, their head basketball coach Danny Nee and his staff, sports information director Frank Morgan, and from Illinois State, athletic director Dan Cornley, head basketball coach Bob Donawald and his staff, and their sports information director Tom LaMonica. They're outstanding help making this possible here tonight. 539 left in this basketball game. Illinois State has opened a six-point lead after a long, long battle with Ohio University. And still a long way to go. The Illinois State cheerleaders leading their cheering section, which is sizable. You can see the concern on the fans of the Ohio University faces here in the Sun Dome right now. The way this game has gone, six points looks like a mountain. It isn't, but it looks like it in this game. Now, Hank Cornley toes the line, a 68% shooter. A 6'7 junior from Columbus, Ohio's Mifflin High School. I think it is a mountain because when you've only scored 43 points and the other team 37, a six or seven point lead is an awfully big lead with 5.39 to go in this game. And Carnley missed the front end of a one of a two shot foul. And you can see Bob Donawal's expression. Carnley misses them both. Rick Alexander up to Jeff Thomas. 5.35 left in the game. Ohio U down by six, and their fans get on their feet and start to urge the Bobcats on now. 
Burnley missed them both, and he's a 68.4% foul shooter. Inside, Vic Alexander gets a big basket for Ohio University. He has a dozen points now, and it's a four-point lead for Illinois State with 5.15 to play. That's the play they needed. Take it in low. Devereaux made the pass. And that's, get it low, get it to Alexander, get it to Devereaux. McKinney gets it down to Cornley, double fake, shots up, won't count, he's going to be called for a walk. Ohio University down by four, gets it back with five minutes, four seconds left in the game, and the Bobcats trying to storm right back. A little too anxious on the inside. Great poise, both ball clubs here. Jeff Thomas brings it up for the Bobcats. Ohio University needs patience here. Devereaux handles the ball, now Tatum. Thomas, Hicks, Rod to Alexander, shot good. And now, with four minutes and 39 seconds left in the game here in the Sun Dome, Illinois State has a two-point lead in the ball. Lamb goes inside, and a foul is called against Lamb. Rick Lamb commits his third foul. Now 4.33 left in this game. Illinois State by two. Ohio University could get it tied here. And it's just indicative of the kind of a game we've seen here tonight. It has been quite a battle here in the Sun Dome. Two teams extremely well matched. They had the numbers. They got it to Lamb on the right side. He didn't really have it. But right here, Devereaux sets up beautifully. Lamb runs over him, and he's called for charging. Good call. Ohio University going for the tie. With 4.15 left in the game. Hooks Devereaux. Alexander fades away, shot won't fall, but he was fouled. That's called on Leonard Mullane, and that's his third. It looked like Ohio University was out of it. They were down six. Conley was at the line shooting two, but he missed them both. And then Ohio University, with a lot of patience, they came down and did the thing they had to do, take it inside and take it inside low, and they did it twice to Alexander, and he made both on practically layups on the inside to cut that lead to two, Lamb charge. Illinois State has it back and a chance to tie it. Devereaux takes the shot from the circle, we're tied. Great comeback. Devereaux has 10 points and one key to this game right now. Illinois State has committed 16 fouls, Ohio University only three. The arrow belongs to Illinois State. Lamb, shot's good. Rick Lamb gets it right back for the Redbirds. He now has 17 points, Illinois State by two with 347 to play. Devereaux. Ricky Johnson pulls a big rebound down for Illinois State. And the Redbirds have a two-point lead in the ball with 3.38 to play. Lamb made a big move inside you know, Fred a minute ago by taking it to that basket because he knows that Devereaux, with four fouls, does not want to really challenge him that tough. The time before, he ran over him. That time, though, he slid on him a little bit. And that's how Illinois State got the lead with 3.33 to go in the game. I don't know how Inter Ohio University injured player here. I was going to say, how can they make the substitution? Eddie Hicks is injured in coming out of the game. Bob Donawal is questioning why they made the substitution, and Hicks is going right onto the dressing. No, he's going to stop at the end of the bench now. So Eddie Hicks is out of the game injured. Nate Cole is on the floor for the Bobcats. Ohio well, University man to man, and I mean with pressure. Lamb down inside. Beautiful move, Lamb on a fallaway jumper on the baseline. They cleared the left side, gave it to him, and let him operate one-on-one. -on -one. Just beautiful. Lead back to four. Lamb now has 19 points, 47-43. Illinois State, 3-0-4, left in the ballgame. Nate Cole, John Devereaux for Ohio University, and Mullane got a hand on him and fouled him. Raynard Mullane commits his fourth foul. Too much hands. He's trying to get a piece of it. And that should be one and one for Ohio University. There's Hicks. They're working on him over there. He's holding the back of his left thigh if that's where the injury is. I think he's got a cramp. They're kind of rubbing that leg. He limp coming back defensively, and the referee picked it up. And they're going to take him inside, it looks like. They'll take him on to the dressing room. Three minutes left in this game. Devereaux got the first one. No, you know, they're not taking him in. They've got him laying flat on the floor over at the I end see. of the court. Mm -hmm. There he is. Three minutes left in the game, now a three-point lead, and now Devereaux could get Ohio University back within two. 73% free throw shooter, drilled them both, nothing but net. 12 points for John Devereaux, a two-point lead to Illinois State, 2.58 left in the basketball game. Don't go running away. <laughs> Just when we thought that Illinois State was pulling away, Ohio University said no, and they come roaring back. 
Ricky Johnson. Rick Lamb. They had McKinney down low. Couldn't take it down there. Lamb now lost the ball. Off his knee, and Ohio U could tie it with 2.43 left in the game. The Bobcats get it back. Lamb tried to make a move on Devereaux. He hit it with his knee, and you're right. Ohio University with 2.35 to go on this clock has a chance to tie. Illinois State still man-to-man -man defensively. Nate Cole along the wing for the Bobcats. And Cornley out covered. Now Robert Tatum McKinney with it. They want to go inside. They want to go low with it. Alexander's down there. Devereaux coming out to the top. Devereaux with the basketball. Near side Tatum. 2.15 left in the game. Alexander's posting up well inside. They're not getting it to him. Covered well there. Devereaux's going to take the shot. Short. And Lamb clears the rebound. I'm surprised he shot that one. 2.02 left in the game. Illinois State with a two-point lead in the ball. McKinney against Tatum in a circle. Takes the jumper. Too strong. And Illinois State turns it, they turn it over, but they lose it on the rebound to Devereaux. And again, a chance for the tie for Ohio University. Thomas off the front of the rim. Tatum picks it up. A minute 41 left in the game. Thomas from the corner. We're tied. He was determined. He missed the first one. He said, give it back to me. He got nothing but the bottom of the sack with 130. Eight points. Jeff Thomas, 47-47 tie. A minute 27 left in the basketball game here in the Sun Dome. Lamb to Cornley. One shot, says the coach, Bob Donawal. So Illinois State with a minute 16 left now will set it up to play for the last shot of the game. Are we headed for overtime? Is somebody going to win it in regulation? There's a foul against Nate Cole. He tried for the steal, and I don't know why. 109 to go. He didn't get it, and he came from too far, really, to try to pick it off. He stepped into the passing lane, but his anticipation was just a little bit slow. That is the fifth foul on Nate Cole, so he'll leave this ball game. Nate Cole has played hard, played well, fouls out, and didn't score for him. What team foul now? Is that on Ohio U? That is number four on Ohio University. They have two more. Well, they, they can, can spend, They can play some aggressive. Yeah, they can play some aggressive defense here, going for the steal. If they don't get it, all they do is take the ball out of bounds. A minute nine left in the game, and now Ohio University wants a timeout to talk about things here. So both coaches now will set some strategy for the final minute nine. There's Illinois State gathering around coach Bob Donawal. And a timeout taken here. One minute, nine seconds left in this basketball game. Illinois State has possession of the ball tied with Ohio University 47-47. Fred White and Joe Dean back at the Sun Dome on the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa. What a basketball game. A 47-47 tie, a minute nine left. Illinois State has the ball. In the second half of this game alone, there have been 12 ties and 11 lead changes just in this half. And I feel confident saying just as many in the first half. And the lead once, though, by Illinois State was six. And they were at the line shooting two. Could have gone up seven or eight. Now again, Ohio Didn't University get has two fouls to spend before they put Illinois State in a one and one so they can be aggressive here. A minute nine left. Illinois State playing for the last shot of the basketball game. I'm sure that's what Danny Need told him in the huddle. Be aggressive. And if it's a good open shot, it'll be the first one anybody's had in this basketball game. Every shot has been contested so far tonight. We're under a minute. McKinney against Jeff Thomas with 53 seconds left in the game. Now Rick Lamb has the ball outside. Vic Alexander comes out. Mullane is covered by Hicks. Near side, it's corner. Covered by Devereaux. And they hold it definitely for the last shot, Fred, unless something unusual happened that they would get an uncontested layup. 34 seconds left in the game. Michael McKinnon takes it back up top. Gives to Ricky Johnson. 28 seconds left in the game. 47-47 tie. Illinois State holding for the last shot of the game. 22 seconds left in the game. 20 seconds left in the game. Michael McKinney on the dribble. Seal Robert Tatum on the breakaway with 15 seconds left. Ohio University's ahead. Robert Tatum got the steal, his ninth point, and with 12 seconds left, Ohio University has taken a two-point lead. You talk about picking your pocket. What a steal. He blindsided him, took it away, went the length of the court, and very, very calmly 
didn't try to explode to the basket, stopped and just laid it in. And the green and white of Ohio University, they're standing and roaring. Now the Bobcat fans are whooping it up here in the Sun Dome. Plenty of time left. They have 12 seconds left on the clock now. Illinois State will have to move it the length of the court. There's the clock and there's the score. Interesting in the second half, Illinois State is 11 of 18. 61.1 percent beautiful shooting Ohio University 10 of 22 just 45 and a half percent Ohio University 80 percent throw at the foul line and Illinois State just two for four 50 percent here's the replay watch him pick it right right there see the hand reach out and knock it away McKinney Gold trying to get a piece of it because he knew he was in trouble you can see the clocks counting the seconds and number 20 Tatum just takes his time and lays it in because he knew he was all by himself. You know what? When you're that open and you stop, that suddenly is not an easy shot. No, it isn't. <laughs> and the pressure was on. And Tatum, though, what a steal. What quickness. Here it comes again on the other end. Almost Ohio got University. ripped up right beautiful. now. Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. There it is. The Mid-American Tourney Champs. The now, first NCAA tournament since 73-74. As we mentioned, they were 13-14 last year, but what a job Danny Knee's done with this team. They're 22-8, and eight, the most wins ever for this university. Now another timeout has been taken. Illinois State now has Brad Duncan in the ball game. He has been an outstanding shooter for the Redbirds here tonight. Timeout taken here with 12 seconds left in this basketball game. Illinois State has the ball. Ohio University has a two-point lead. We are back in the Sun Dome. Fred White and Joe Dean, Ohio University, off the steal by Robert Tatum, now has a two-point lead. Illinois State will have the ball. They have to go the length of the court. Twelve seconds left. That clock tells it all. Twelve seconds. They're 90 feet away. Illinois State down by two to Ohio University. The Tatum steal gave Ohio University the lead as Illinois State was holding for the last shot of the game. Ohio University got the layup from Tatum and the lead, and now Illinois State will try to get it tied and get it to overtime. 12 seconds is a long time, so they've got plenty of time to get it up and get a real, real good shot. Brad Duncan pushes it up, gets it across timeline. Eight seconds left. Duncan trapped in the sideline. Mullane off the baseline. Jeffers up. Good! We're tied with three seconds left. Ohio University gets timeout with two seconds left. Raynard Mullane very calmly pumped it in off the baseline for his sixth point of the night. A 49-49 tie with two seconds to play. Look at the joyous Look relief. At Illinois State fans <laughs> are going bananas. The red and white now. It's their time to cheer. We're going to tie with two seconds left on this clock. Well, ten minutes ago I said if I ever saw a game headed for overtime, this you is it, and it may be. Here's you the shot it. again. It wasn't the greatest shot in the world. I don't know that they wanted Mullaney to take it, but they got it into the corner. Time was running out. They put good pressure on him. Tough he shot. Got, oh, it was. And I think they wanted Duncan to put it up. We'll show it to you again. Duncan coming across now. It'll coming be across the 10 second line. I think they wanted to get it to somebody and then kick it back to him because look he's at, the shooter. You can see Mullaney. There he goes, down, drifting down in that right corner. And he just knew. And that's that Devereaux that came out and put the pressure on and had good defense on him. Now you can see that at Ohio University trying to take a timeout, but that clock had kicked down to two seconds. Now the Bobcats have two seconds to try and win it. Well, we will be in overtime. And overtime is probably where this game deserves to be, the way they've done that one another tonight. About it, Fred, you're accurate. As well as they played, the ties that they've had at one time, we thought the Illinois State was going to kind of pull away there. With about six minutes ago, they had built a six-point lead. They were at the line, but Ohio University said no. But at that point, you made the comment that Ohio University lost a little patience, and they had, but they regained that patience, took it in low to Alexander, and they got two real easy baskets and put them back in it. Now, you talk about strategy battles. When Bob Donawal saw how Ohio University was going to set up there, they had Tatum at the baseline to throw it in. Everybody else at midcourt, he took a tie up. You want to talk about it. Let's draw that on the board, and let me show you how I want you to play it, because he doesn't want to run out, because they're a man defensive team, and they could get somebody blocked or jammed up in this four-man stack at midcourt, and anything could happen. Now let me ask you this. Danny Nee now knows that Bob Donawal saw the deployment and is going to change to defend that. Will he make a switch here? thing he's got to do almost stay with what he was doing Fred because he's only got two seconds 
He's got to get a long pass, and whoever gets it has just got to turn and crank it up to the basket and just hope that it goes in. There's a good shot in him there, directing traffic and telling them what he's what he saying. Catch, catch it, it and shoot it. Catch, catch it, it and shoot, shoot it. it. And he's, Illinois State cannot can afford it. to foul him. Oh, you're right. 49-49 tie, two seconds to play. As good a basketball game as you could ever hope to see. This is NCAA tournament action. From the Mideast Regional at the Sendo on the campus of the University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida. Beautiful arena, beautiful basketball game. All right, we are down to it. Two seconds to go, a 49-49 tie. Ohio University will have to go the length of the floor. They're going to stay with the same thing. Jeff Thomas will throw the ball in. Everybody is at midcourt. Except for Mark Zouard, who's playing defense on the backside. There the lob is. Devereaux goes up. Illinois State gets away. There's a shot up. It's good. It is good. Robert Tatum nailed it. That was a long two seconds. I thought he was fouled when he went for the ball. No too. foul was called, and he got the shot away, and it went in. And Ohio University has won this ball game 51 to 49. What a finish here at the Sendo. I fully expected to hear a whistle blow and a foul call. That never happened. Tatum somehow, despite the fact that he was bumped and off balance, was able to get that shot in the air, and he got nothing but net. Here comes the action. Now the clock won't start till now. The ball's been touched, deflected. Tatum picks it up on the wing. See the tangle right there? He just simply throws the ball, and it goes through the net. No foul is called. Here you're going to see it from another angle. Now Thomas will throw it the length of the court. Devereaux goes up in traffic. Here you see him around him. The ball deflected. Thomas picks up the deflection. Now Reynard Mullane lands on him. No foul call there. And it's just a throw, and it simply went in the basket. And Ohio University has won this game. There's the celebration by the Bobcats. 51-49, the final score. A tremendous basketball game here in the Sun Dome in Tampa tonight. An odd finish. It looked as if Mullane had fouled Tatum. That was not called, and Tatum nearly falling down. More than a shot, Joe. It was a throw, but what a throw. Excuse me, we'll try to get Jody's microphone working again here. There's your final, 51-49. Well, they did exactly what they said they were going to do. They didn't change anything. They threw it the length of the court. It's all they could do. And the ball got kicked around, as you mentioned, Fred, but it was one of those unbelievable finishes. But I agree. I thought there was a foul at the end. Nobody called it, but all of a sudden, the ball is just tickling the tassels. And Ohio University, what a victory. Unbelievable. 51-49 over a very, very disappointed Illinois State Bob Donawal coach basketball team. And Joe Dean, you're going to have to wait a long time to see a better basketball game than this thing here tonight. It was just a tremendous, tremendous contest. Both teams wouldn't quit. They wouldn't give up. Uh, we mentioned earlier uh, three-point leads were the biggest leads throughout the game until down near the end. Illinois State kind of eased away, but Ohio University, they would not give up. They kept coming back. What a finish. And with two seconds, I thought we were a cinch for overtime. Well, I thought we were too, but you're going to see the play again that changed all that. Here comes the length of the court pass. Devereaux goes up, heavily defended. Ball deflected onto the wing. There's Robert Tatum. Off balance, hits the deck. The shot goes in. That's a two-point win for Ohio University. Here it is again. Let's watch again. Look, Fred, I thought it was really close, whether it left his hand actually before the clock got to zero. Let's watch it again. There's, the clock's not there, so we can't. We got Danny Knee coming now, Fred, to talk to us. Well, hey, I'm Danny. sure he's a little bit excited. Oh, no, he's not excited at all. He's not excited at all. <laughs> all right. Huh? And Joe Dean, we're going to look at it one more time with the clock in it. Watch this. We'll Come watch this with us, Danny. Come watch this. Let me get him on a turnaround. So let, you all, let you guys see this. Play it one more time for us. All right, here it cuts. Here's, Here's the it's bounced off right here. Robert kicked loose. We thought it. you were fouled right here. We thought they fouled you. Look at the shot. shot. He got it Tatum up. shot. Huh? Three-point play, huh? Robert Tatum. All right. Final score again. Ohio University has defeated Illinois State 51-49. Joe Dean has coached Denny Neal. And the man who made the shot, Robert Tatum. Let's see what they have Fred, to say about thank it all. You. Thank you, Fred. Danny has to be one of the great thrills of your young coaching life. 
I mean, you brought this Ohio State, Ohio University team here, and you were down six. It looked like it was over. I know. You roared, you roared back. I think the kids just tremendous determination and mental concentration. I thought we beat a good basketball team, but it's kids like a freshman like this that make coaching great. Robert Taylor, I love him. Huh? You can't love him. Uh, huh? Robert, what was the Zion? We, we, they called timeout after they saw the lineup that right. Illinois State did, right. but you stayed pretty much with the lineup. You were just going to throw the link to the court and take your chances or what? Well, that's what, that's what the play was assigned. It was a play called Hawks, and we, we designed it, and we're throwing the long pass to John Devereaux to hoping that he would get it in the top of the key, top of the key area and shoot the shot, but he didn't get the shot, and the ball neglected. You can see it right and there. And I got the ball. Look at the I shot you shot got you, did, did you feel bumped on the play? Did you feel like you were I hit did. on the play? I thought I thought a whistle was going